today is organ of sight under sense organs sense organs we are going to look at the organ of sight the human body has five sense organs namely the eye for vision the ear for hearing and balancing the nose for smelling the tongue for tasting the skin for receiving sensations of temperature pain touch and pressure now organ of sight the two eyes are the organs of sight in every vertebrate each eye is a spherical spherical organ located in a bony socket in the skull it is held in position by six muscles one two oblique muscles lower and upper two four rectus muscles upper lateral median and lower ones the six muscles control the free movement of the eye in many directions to move the eye the six muscles work in opposing fashion against one another among these muscles towards the back of the eye is a thick optic nerve which connects the eye to the brain a small portion of the front part is exposed this part is protected by the upper and lower eyelids and the eyelashes beneath the eyelids are tear glands this secretes a saline fluid known as tears which moisten the conjunctiva and it washes away dust particles and insects and destroys most bacteria it contains a chemical called lysozyme this fluid drains through a tear duct into the nasal cavity now let's look at the structure of the eye a vertical section of the eye shows the inside of the eyeball to be a fluid filled hollow structure its wall consists of three layers the sclera which is the outermost layer the choroid which is the middle layer the retina which is the innermost layer now let's look at them one by one the sclera or sclerotic layer is a white tough connective tissue which protects and maintains the spherical shape of the eyeball its bulges at the front to form a convex transparent tissue called cornea at the back it is perforated by the optic nerve the front part of the eye is covered by a tough thin transparent membrane called the conjunctiva this covers and protects the cornea the second layer which is called the choroid is made up of pigmented cells it is richly supplied with blood capillaries this supply nourishment nourishment and oxygen to the cells of the eye the layer contains a black pigment which absorbs light rays and prevent light reflections into the eye the choroid form the iris in front of the eye there is an aperture through the iris called the pupil light enters the eye through the pupil the iris control the amount of light passing through the pupil the iris has radial and circular muscle fibers. In bright light, the circular fibers contract while the radial fibers relax. Hence, the puppy becomes smaller and less light enters the eye. But in dim light, the reverse occurs. Then the third layer is the retina. The retina is the innermost layer of the eye. We shall have a break now and continue from this after break. Thank you.
you are welcome back. We are talking about the retina, which is the innermost layer of the eye. It is the light sensitive layer and is restricted to the back of the eyeball. It gets its nourishment from the capillaries of the choroid. It contains two types of photoreceptors, the rod and the cones. The rods are the photoreceptors responsible for black and white vision as well as night vision. The cones are responsible for color visions and are sensitive to eye light intensities. Images formed on the retina are always inverted and smaller than the real objects. The part of the retina that contains the highest concentration of light sensitive cells is the, layer, is the yellow spot known as fovea centralis. It is the most sensitive part of the retina. A point with light in, in sensitive cells just below the fovea centralis is called the blind spot. The optic nerve leaves the eyeball to the brain at the blind spot. Then the optical apparatus of the eye at the cornea, the lens, and the retina. And they lie along the optical axis of the eye. The lens is a crystalline, transparent, biconvex, bi flexible disc located just behind the iris. It is held by the suspensory ligaments attached to the ciliary muscles, which are located on and originate from the choroid layer. The shape of the lens changes when the muscles contract. This helps the eye to focus images on the retina for far or near objects. The space in front of the lens is filled with watery aqueous humor. The much bigger space behind the lens is filled with the jelly-like vitreous humor, which helps to maintain the spherical shape of the eyeball. Both are solutions of uh, proteins, sugars, and salt in water. Apart from maintaining the spherical shape of the eye, they assist in the formation of images by reflecting incoming light rays. Now let's look at the image formation. To see an object, light rays from every point on the object enter the eye. The rays pass through the cornea, aqueous humor, lens and vitreous humor along the optical axis. The rays are refracted and brought to a focus on the retina where an image is formed. This image is real, inverted and smaller than the object. The reflection of light within the walls of the eyeball is prevented by the dark pigmentation of the choroid layer. The points of light which fall on the retina stimulate the rods and cones, photoreceptors in the retina. The electrical impulse initiated is then transmitted to the brain, which interprets it as upright with the correct size and distance from the eye. The object is most clearly seen. It's most clearly seen when the image falls on the fovea centralis. Now, what is accommodation? Accommodation is a reflection, is a reflex action of the eyes. And it can be defined as the ability of the eyes to focus properly images of objects from far and near on the retina. When focusing on distant objects, the ring muscles of the ciliary body relax and move away radially from the lens. This tightens the suspensory ligaments so that they pull radially on the lens. These actions cause the lens to flatten and become thinner so that light rays falling on it are refracted. 
You shall stop for me and continue after break. Thank you. You are welcome back. Now let's look at the eye defects. Whenever an image cannot be formed properly on the retina, we say the eye has a defect. Some of the major eye defects are short-sightedness or myopia, long-sightedness or hypermetropia, press biopia, astigmatism, color blindness, cataracts, and night blindness. Now let's look at them one after the other. Short-sightedness. People are, who are short-sighted can see near objects clearly, but distant objects appear blood. This may be due to one, the eyeball being longer than normal from back to front, two, the lens may be too strong, three, the refractive power of the eye may be too great, four, the distance between the lens and the retina is increased. The result is that the light rays are focused in front of the retina because parallel light rays are refracted too much. Short-sightedness can be corrected by using spectacles with suitable concave lenses. The lenses will diverge the rays from a distant object to the correct extent before they are focused on the retina by the eye lenses. The second one is long-sightedness. People who are long-sighted can see distant objects clearly, but near objects appear blood. This may be due to one, the eyeball being too short, two, the lens being too weak and the refractive power too little, three, the eye lens is not sufficiently convex, and four, the diverging light rays are not sufficiently refracted. As a result of one or the other of these conditions, rays of light from a near object are not bent sufficiently enough to come to a focus on the retina, but forms outside the retina. Long-sightedness can be corrected by using spectacles with suitable convex lenses. Convex lenses. Then the next one is astigmatism. People who suffer from astigmatism have the cornea with an uneven curvature. Light rays that arrive at the surface of the cornea are refracted unevenly so that distorted images are formed on the retina. Astigmatism may be corrected by using lenses of, on, of uneven surfaces that functionally compensate the cornea. The next one is press biopia. The eye lens auxiliary muscles of many old people may become inelastic or hardened so that accommodation is reduced. The defect may be corrected with the use of uh, weak convex lenses or bifocal lenses with upper and lower halves. The next one is uh, color blindness. In a color blind person, one or more types of cones are absent or defective. It is an inherited condition and can be detected by using special charts. It cannot be corrected. Then the next one is the cataract. This condition usually occur in old people. The lens become cloudy and sufficient. Light cannot pass through it. The affected person cannot see objects clearly. It can be corrected by removing the affected lens and replacing it with a, a plastic one or by using spectacles with a suitable lens. And the last one that I will be discussing under that defect is the night blindness. People suffering from this defect cannot see clearly in dim light. This is usually due to a deficiency of vitamin A, which is required to manufacture rhodopsin, rhodopsin in the photoreceptors. 
Others, other eye defects include pterygium, glaucoma, conjunctivity, river blindness. Now let's quickly look at the care of the eye. Do not clean the eyes or rub them with dirty handkerchief or dirty fingers. Do not read books in dim light. See a doctor in case of eye infection. Avoid looking into very bright light. So before I leave the class, let me give you an assignment. I want you to observe a model of the human eye and make a large world-libre diagram of the eye. Thank you. We shall continue in the next class.